and you must fight the momentum of average to break through to extraordinary, to savage. Welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. Hey, what's happening, friends? Welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. I'm Bedros Coolian, and we've got a really good show teed up for you today. Uh, but before we kick this off, I want to let you know about BK Live. BK Live, that's right, a two-day get-together in person for men and women, high performers who watch and listen to my show on September 8th and 9th in beautiful Costa Mesa, California, right here. I'm having a two-day awesome get-together workshop seminar. Um, it's going to be about 300 people. I'm limiting it to 300 people, and you're like, man, that sounds like a lot. That's actually a small amount of people. For 11 years, I ran an event called Fitness Business Summit, and we would bring in 1,500 gym owners together for three days. Every year I'd give away a Land Rover to one of the attendees who made the biggest transformation in their business. Um, but this is gonna be a 300 person intimate event as far as I'm concerned. I'm bringing a few of my good friends uh, that you might be following on social media. They'll be speaking from stage. Mark down these dates, September 8th and 9th. Remember, I always tell you guys that proximity is powerful, right? You wanna be within proximity of people. You don't wanna just be hiding behind your laptop, behind your TV, behind your iPhone. You want to actually start connecting with people. That's the number one thing I hear over and over again is, Bedros, you talk about finding your band of brothers. You talk about finding your tribe. You talk about finding your community. How do I find it? Well, you're not just going to find it when you're sitting at home. You have to go to events and, 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 and experience like humans in person in real life. What do you know? You don't have to just live online through social media. And in fact, those that are living mostly their lives through social media are depressed, anxious, suffering in silence. Their immune system is low. Uh, they make less income. They're not getting laid. Like if, if you want to actually have a great human experience, we are tribal and you have to come around where events of like-minded, you know, to events where like-minded people hang out. And I don't care if that's a Spartan race, a mud run, if you if you want to go join a book club, a chess club, there are a lot of in-person events across the country, across the world that you can go to. Go fucking run a marathon. If you just if you just do the marathon challenge, right? If you just if if you go to bedroscooling.com forward slash challenge and it's a free marathon training program for you six weeks long it's my first challenge that i ever did right trained for six weeks and ran a marathon like all of a sudden if you do this you'll be around thousands of people on week six as you're running that marathon tell me you're not going to make at least three or four or five like-minded friends from that one experience tell me for six weeks of training the the free training that i'm going to give you and you're going to be out there in your city in your town running around getting your miles in that you're not going to make friends like as you're out there doing it, but you gotta be out there doing it. I don't care if it's a road bike. I don't care if it's gonna, you're gonna go join jujitsu. If you're gonna come do the project, if you're gonna do the Squire program, Masogi, but better is cooling live, uh, BK live, in-person live event. It's gonna be a game changer for folks who just are meant for more, man. I'm gonna bring our tribe, our community together, and I'm doing this because I know the demand is so high, September 8th and 9th. Make sure you guys join us and don't use the excuse of like, man, this is too far. I can't fly that way. If you could just do it in my neighborhood. Like we always get people flying all over the world from different countries. They come out to our events for over 15 years. And so if you're like, man, I don't want to fly across the country while everyone else is willing to fly across the world, like that might be the reason why that like you're so procrastinating in, in launching in life is because you want everything to be so convenient and comfortable for you where I won't do something unless it's in my neck of the woods and right in my own backyard. Like be willing to take the human journey, man, the hero's journey, right? So that's all, man. September 8th and 9th, join us. Also, thank you all for supporting us on Spotify and iTunes. We see the following, the tribe growing. We see your reviews. I appreciate you guys leaving the questions on Spotify because we're now on Spotify's Anchor video platform, which is a really cool exclusive platform that Joe Rogan is on. Um, they certainly didn't pay me $100 million to do that, but it was a great privilege to be asked to uh, have that exclusive opportunity. And so you can now watch my podcast just like you would watch it on YouTube on Spotify as well. And there's a place to leave questions on there. And so go ahead and do that. And we're going to do our best to interact there as well. So without further ado, I want to kind of spearhead this episode because I've been really excited about it because um, you guys probably hear me say this at the end of every show, right? Average is the enemy. Success is your responsibility and change can take place in an instant when you decide to flip the switch, right? Well, 
why do I say that? Well, first of all, I say that to myself every single morning. Every single morning is a personal mantra that I say. I just happened to share it here one time and then it took off and it went viral and people were using it all over their social media videos and workout videos and that's awesome, man. I love it that you guys do that. But I thought I would break down what that means to me and I hope that it has the same impact and effect on you. So it's breaking down, right? The whole idea, I've always like felt in my, in my, in my bones, in my bone marrow, I've always felt that I was different. Even when I was broke, even when I was poor, even when I was, you know, getting in trouble with the law, you know, carjackings, right? We were robbing homes, police helicopter chase. Uh, even when I was just doing really stupid, shady shit, I knew that I was meant for more and that I had a higher calling. And so I always wanted to create change. And I always wondered, how does change take place? How does change take place? And change usually takes place when you get to a place of enough is enough. If you've heard me talk about that police helicopter chase where, um, you know, we, me and my friends, and I was the getaway driver, we went and we cased the house and we thought the house was empty, um, meaning the people weren't home, they had left for work. And so we cased this house and my friends got out and went into the backyard to break in and steal, you know, valuables from the house and then I was sitting there in my Toyota pickup, waiting for them to come out with all the stuff and I would take off like we had done that before. Well, as it turns out, this, you know, unfortunately sweet little old lady was still in the house and my friend spooked her, freaked her out. And so, you know, she freaked them out. They came running out within seconds. They're like, drive, drive, drive. And of course I take off before you know it, there's a police helicopter. I think it was Boynton Park PD. Um, so Anaheim PD cops were uh, following us, uh, <laughs> a low speed chase, just like OJ Simpson. Um, Cause I had a 79 Toyota pickup. It's a four cylinder engine and it was not about to go any faster than, you know, 45, 50 miles per hour. I should have thought of that, um, but I never thought that I'd be in a police helicopter chase, right? So anyways, helicopter chase, cops, we ultimately end up trying to jump out of the car once I, I stop abruptly at a gas station, but they got us quickly, rounded us up, and of course this lady came. Uh, they brought the old lady who was in the house and she identified my friends, but wasn't able to identify me since I wasn't in the house. And so my friends end up going to jail. I get released, they impound my car, obviously. Um, I get several citations, one of them being for reckless driving, the other one being for exhibition of speed. Um, and of course, uh, but I got a slap in the wrist considering what my friends got, right? Because they were in the house and she was able to identify them visually. And for me, that was a enough is enough moment. Like that was like, all right, dude, something has to change now. And I always think about that, right? Like you might want something. You might want a better life. You might want to have a fit and athletic body. You might want to have a better relationship. You want to, you might want to have, start making more money and win your financial freedom. You might want to have better self-control, self-mastery. You might want to have greater confidence. Whatever those things you want, they're on the other side of the enough is enough moment that you must have. And if you haven't had that yet, then you haven't hit rock bottom. For me, it was rock bottom when I had that moment sitting on the front bumper of a police cruiser along with my friends and this woman who's in the police squad car across from us is looking at my friends and nodding her head, yes, 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 as in I, I can, I visualize them, I identify them. And she looked at me and she goes, nope. And I was like, thank God, man, like this, this is my chance. Like enough is enough. Like I just got a free get out of jail card and I'm gonna use it. And so, you know, I see this happen, and you've, you've heard of this happening. Um, you know, it, sadly, it happens when some woman is in a bad relationship. Maybe she's got a husband who's abusive, physically, emotionally, mentally. Um, you know, you hear about uh, the dude will be abusive with her and the kids, and this thing continues for five, 10 years. And then one day, you know, he'll take off his his socks and throw them on the ground and leave them on the ground and, and just look at her as though, hey, you're, you're pretty much my maid. It's your job to pick up my socks, right? This guy's a fucking asshole as far as I'm concerned. He's not a fucking man. He's a fucking asshole. And while he was abusive to her and the kids for all those years, that was the enough is enough moment. That was the moment that she's like, fuck this guy. When he leaves for work, 
tomorrow morning, I'm fucking out of here. Like, what is it that a person will go through years of abuse, physical, mental, emotional, they'll allow their children to go through physical, mental, emotional abuse. And I, I get what it is. It's like, well, you know, he makes the money and then without the money, we don't have a place to live. I, I get all that. But what I'm saying is there's always a breaking point. And the breaking point isn't like, man, he beat me into a bloody pulp and then we left. Like quite often, in fact, it's something small that was the, what do they say? The straw that broke the camel's back. Right. And that one small thing was just like, she's like, fuck this. I'm out. Grabs the kids the next morning when he leaves for work and takes off. And that is when change takes place in her life. And that's what I mean when I say flipping the switch. That is when the switch is flipped in her. Right. The switch was flipped in me because I knew it was easy money to carjack people, to rob their homes and take that stuff to the pawn shop and the pawn shop at the town back in the 90s. They don't ask questions. They just take the stuff, give you the cash and a ticket like, you know, like we're actually going to come back and get the stuff back. And then we bounce. It was easy money for me. And so while I knew what I was doing was bad, I knew deep down inside I was building up karmic debt. I knew that I was not meant to do this. I knew, in fact, I was meant to do a lot more in my life. Like that helicopter chase where we got caught was my enough is enough moment. And I was like, boom, that fucking flipping of the switch must happen now. I see this happen at the project Every project class will see dudes who are crawling through the pit, who are sitting in the ice bath, who are hiking with the logs. Remember, these dudes pay to be there. And then there's tremendous growth that takes place over the 75 hours. And then, of course, over the 12 months of coaching them and mentoring them that comes with the project, there's tremendous growth. But with that growth, there's also 75 hours of emotional, physical, mental suffering adversity that we put them through, right? It's, it's the idea is to break them down physically. And we put them through physical evolutions and challenges that they do as a team. But nevertheless, they realize this is voluntary. Yes, they've paid for it, but it's voluntary. And it's cold and it's windy. They might be at the ocean and it's wet. And they look at that bell because they know if they just ring that bell three times, it's over. It's done. We shake hands. We give them a donut. We buy them coffee. We take them back to the hotel. But at some point, that same guy who was negotiating with his inner bitch, who was thinking of giving up, who was just deaf to his inner advocate. At some point during the project, we see these guys flip the switch and me and all the instructors look at each other and we're like, that guy's good. He's not going to quit. He's no longer looking at the bell. He has now taken the soul of Steve and Ray and, and he now owns the instructors, right? He just gave, gave us this, gives us this savage look. And I love that because that tells me he's flipped his switch. He is locked on. This guy is going to just plow through the project and finish with flying colors. Like what happens during the project where whatever, 20, 25, 30 hours in, some dude who was like grunting and moaning and complaining and, you know, we'd have to talk him out of ringing the bell two or three times. All of a sudden, boom, flips the switch. And now he's just all in. He's locked on. He's fucking owning our souls he's gone to a new place in his head he has completely silenced the inner critic he has silenced the inner bitch he has turned off the negative self-talk and he has cranked up the volume on his inner advocate and the rest of that time and the rest of his life he fucking flipped that switch and broke it off like that moment in the pit in the ocean pulling the truck in the ice bath wherever that moment was that is when he flipped his switch and that's when everything changed for him, right? And that's the moment we're looking for because that is when you begin to break through all the seals in your life. And so I share this one, uh, you know, this, this lesson with you right now because change literally does happen in an instant when you are willing to change and flip that switch. Change happens in an instant. You might have thought about it for years. That battered woman may have thought about it for years about escaping and leaving her, her abusive asshole of a husband, but it, boom, one day something happens and she's out. He said something, he did something and she is out, right? For me, I had thought about like not carjacking and not robbing homes for a long time. But that one thing happened that I was like, dude, this was a gift from God. Accept it, be grateful for it and move on. Like I was done. I am no longer going to do things that are going to build up my karmic debt. Instead, I'm going to build up goodwill 
for the rest of my life. And since then I've been on a mission, right? On a mission. Since 19 years old, I've been on a fucking mission to just be a better human. Yeah, it took a few years to really get my stride. You know, I've talked about how really it wasn't until my late 20s that I started to get momentum. And then in my 30s when I started to see success, big success in business. But now at 48, man, like I've got two and a half decades of history under my belt. And now I could pass it along to you. Understand change can take place in an instant. So when I share that with you and I say, look, average is the enemy, what do I mean? See, I believe that the opposition, I believe that the system, I believe that big government and big mega pharma and big businesses, they need worker bees. They need worker bees to run the factories, to run the machines, to create the products, to pay the taxes. They want you to stay broke and dependent and scared and just on the brink of losing it all financially because that is how they get the highest level of control and compliance. In other words, another way of saying broke and dependent and busted up is average. They want you to stay average. Yet if I asked you, if you've got a son or a daughter, if you've got kids and I asked you like, hey man, would you, would you ever want your, your daughter to be, hey, just be an average kid, get average grades in school, you know, find an average guy, marry this average guy, get an average job, get an average home, live an average life, have an average death. You would not want an average life for your kid, would you? You would want something extraordinary for your kid. Yet we accept average so easily. And so when I created this mantra for myself that average is the enemy, that success is my responsibility, and that change can take place in an instant when we, I, you and me decide to flip the switch, I'm constantly reminding myself every single morning that I have control, right? Like the opposition wants us to stay average. Our neighbors want us to stay average. Hell, your family wants you to stay average because when you change, your family fears that change. They don't like the 2.0 version of you. They don't like the evolved version of you. They don't like the version of you that all of a sudden is having higher standards in life and setting higher expectations. They are unfamiliar with that person and that is scary to them. And so, yes, average is the enemy. Yet so much of society, humanity, all the systems, all the big organizations are set up to keep everybody average and you must fight the momentum of average to break through to extraordinary, to savage, right? It is literally a momentum, the same level of momentum that has to be built for a giant 737 that's fully loaded to capacity that weighs whatever, 800,000 pounds or a million pounds, I don't know what the fuck it weighs. Someone in the comments, let me know what a 747 or 737 loaded to capacity weighs, please. But imagine this giant plane has to fight all this gravity with all this weight, it has to build up so much speed on that tarmac, on that runway, so that it can begin to get lift off. It can get enough wind under those wings to get lift off and get up to 35, 36, 37,000 feet up into the air. Like that is a lot of momentum for that plane to have to fight, to have to put out, to be able to break through the, 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 the pressure that gravity puts on it to hold it down onto the earth. We must have that level of momentum to break out of average because average is the enemy. Success is your responsibility. Why do I say that? Well, it's to remind you that it is not your parents' responsibility to make you successful in life. And by the way, I'm not just talking about financial success. Anyone's like, oh, this guy's successful. And I go, how? He owns four houses and nine cars. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. First of all, y'all don't even know how many cars I have because it doesn't matter. You don't even know how many timepieces I have because I don't even wear them, but I have plenty. And if I was really to lay out my car keys, what I would do if I really wanted to flex is I would lay out all the fucking deeds to the homes and properties that I own. My point is that's not success by itself. Financial success by itself is not success because if I had all the possessions like I have, I have the money. I have the land, I have the properties, I have the stuff. 
But if I don't have my health, how's that success? If I don't have my family and friends to be able to enjoy these things, how is that success? If I don't have peace of mind, if I don't have this feeling of fulfillment, that every day I'm doing something to serve humanity, to inspire others, to give back, to get one step closer to my higher calling, how's that success, right? So success, holistically, is all of that. Relationship, health, money, peace of mind, great sleep, fitness, fulfillment and that's important for you to understand because no one owes you that you were not owed that you were born into this world by yourself yeah but i got a mom and dad and siblings yeah but you're by yourself on your deathbed it will be you you may have people around you holding your hand praying for you letting you know how much they love you but it will be you dying and not them that's the reality we come into this world alone we die alone what we do between those times is success or failure. So success is your responsibility. Your mom and dad don't owe it to you. Your siblings don't owe it to you. Your school teachers don't owe it to you. Your grandparents don't owe it to you. Your boss doesn't owe it to you. Your business partner doesn't owe it to you. Your wife doesn't owe it to you. Your kids don't owe it to you. And you're like, yeah, I'd be successful, but if it wasn't for being broke, being a foreigner, being black, being white, being Chinese, but if it wasn't for the economy, for Biden, who gives a fuck what your skin color is, who the president is, where you came from, how much money you make, what your socioeconomic thing is, what your gender is. And I know there's 19 genders out there. Pick any one. None of that fucking matters because success is your responsibility. Oh, but I'm transsexual, transvestite, LGBTQ, and I have nine different flags I fly, so I'm confused. Success is still your responsibility, baby girl. It is. It is. Fly your fucking freak flag. I'm all for it. But success is your responsibility. Don't be a fucking victim. Don't expect any preferential treatment for the lifestyle that you want to live. That's personal responsibility at the highest level, right? I am accountable for every word that comes out of my mouth into this microphone. I'm accountable for every decision that gets made in all the different companies that I own and lead. It is my responsibility. Pandemic comes. It is my responsibility to guide this business to success. We have this president or that president. I don't care if it's a Democrat or Republican. Success is my responsibility. You know my story. I was molested as a kid, beaten up by gang members when I came to this country, right? English is a second language for me. Anaheim Union High School District diagnosed me with ADD and OCD and put me on all different experimental levels of Ritalin. So I'm going to say, well, if I didn't have all that, then I'd be successful. Success is not my responsibility. It's because of something that happened to me. I'm going to blame it on circumstance. What a weak fucking move that is to blame your lack of success and happiness on circumstance or people. Bro, but you don't understand my wife, my girlfriend. She's a fuck. You chose her. And guess what, baby girl? You chose him. If you're a captain, save a bro. You chose him. If you're a chick that's got daddy issues, you chose him, didn't you? You were trying to fix him. Or you picked a mama's boy and you want to coddle him because you were too afraid to pick a, a man who could lead you, a man who was decisive. And then now you got this boy and you treat him like a boy, but you expect masculinity from him. Those two dots don't connect. You're not gonna be successful in your marriage. It is your fault. It is your responsibility. That's just how it is. So when I say success is your responsibility, it's exactly that. It doesn't matter who you came from, what color you are, what freak flag you fly. None of that matters. Your circumstances don't matter, how much you were abused. It doesn't matter because today you have a decision to make. You could be listening to this or not. You could be making money or not. You could be screen sucking or not. You can go work out or not. You could eat right or not. You can drink your water or not. You can learn a new language or not. You can go ask for that raise or not. You can go make that decision or not. You have more control than you think. And I'm here to let you know that if you give yourself the permission to take absolute ownership and responsibility of everything in your life, which also 
comes with a high amount of risk. Do you know why? Because then you've got no one to blame when something goes wrong, because you made the decision. It was your choice. But as long as you're the type of person that likes to blame everyone and everything and circumstance and you're the victim because of your skin color and your gender and your orientation and, and how you were abused and, and all this stuff, then guess what? It's not your fault, is it? But deep down inside, you know it is. And you feel the gnawing, the gnawing that tells you that I must take absolute responsibility of being an excellent human being. And personal excellence is a byproduct of absolute responsibility of success. And so finally, when I say circumstances, like where you came from, what you did, a bankruptcy, like, do you know how many people right now it's 2023. And just the other day, I met a dude who said I lost it all in 2008 housing market crash in 2008 housing market crash. 15 years ago, he lost it all. And he's still telling that story. If you're constantly telling your story of, of how you lost it all 15 years ago, how in that divorce, Everything was great until she left you out of the blue. And I go, when? 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Are you gonna keep telling that story, dude? Or are you gonna start taking absolute responsibility? And so I need you to understand the last part of this where I say change can take place in an instant when you decide to flip the switch. You have to get to that enough is enough moment. You have to get to that place where you go, that's it. I will not accept any more of this. This is where I draw the line. I am holding the line, I'm building the boundaries. And if you are willing to do that, you are able then to finally flip the switch. But you have to get sick and tired of the BS. You have to say enough is enough. You have to look in the mirror and go, hey fella, enough of your BS of making excuses, of procrastinating, of blaming others, take personal responsibility and flip the switch. And when you do, you will go from flighty to focused. You can go from bitch to beast, from negative to positive, from fat to fit. You can go from broke to wealthy, from emotional to rational. You can go from average to savage. You can go from scarcity to abundance. You can go from a pleasure seeker to a purpose driven man and you will go from fear to freedom, but only when you decide to flip the switch. You understand that, right? So guys, I'm here to tell you that when I give you that mantra at the end of every one of these episodes, it is my personal mantra, one of many mantras that I have, and I'll share my other mantras with you on other episodes. But it is a personal mantra that I have that I tell myself every morning to remind myself who has control, who's at the steering wheel. It is not Biden, it is not Trump, it is not Republicans, it is not Democrat, it is not China, it is not the United States, it is not any of these circumstances, what happened to you and the story that you tell yourself. It is not your boyfriend, girlfriend, it is not your wife or your husband, it is not your kids, it is not your skin color or gender. It is you, you are at the wheel of your vehicle and you get to decide what happens next. So guys, I hope you guys will join me September 8th and 9th at BK Live in beautiful Costa Mesa, California. But until then, I want you to remember that average is the enemy, that success is your responsibility and change can take place in an instant when you decide to flip the switch. I'll see you guys next time.